Hey, welcome back everyone to theCUBE's coverage of AWS reInvent 2021. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE, wall-to-wall -wall coverage in person and hybrid. We have two great guests here, Manu Parbek, our worldwide leader, Linux and IBM software partnership at AWS, and Mike Evans, Vice President of Technical Business Development at Red Hat. Uh, gentlemen, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Love this conversation, bringing Red Hat and AWS together. Two great companies, great technologies. It really is about software in the cloud, cloud scale. Thanks for coming on. <clears throat> Thanks, John. All right, super. So, so get, let's get into the partnership. Okay, this is super important. Red Hat, well-known open source, as cloud native has become clear, doing an amazing work. Amazon, cloud scale, data is a big part of it, modern software. Tell us about the partnership. Uh, thanks, John. Super excited to share about our partnership. As we've been partnering for almost 14 years together, we started in the very early days of AWS. And now we have tens of thousands of customers that are running RHEL on EC2. If you look at over the last three years, the pace of innovation for our joint partnership has only increased. It is manifested in three key formats. The first one is the pace at which RHEL supports new EC2 instances like ARM, Graviton, um, you know, think about features like uh, Nitro. The second is just the portfolio of new RHEL offerings that we have launched over the last three years. We started with RHEL for SQL, RHEL high availability, RHEL for SAP. And then only last month, we launched the support for knowledge base for uh, RHEL customers. Mike, you want to talk about what we're doing with OpenShift and then Ansible as well? Please. Sure, yeah, it's good to be here. It's, it's fascinating to me because I've been at Red Hat for 20 year, 21 years now and vividly remember the start of working with AWS back in 2008 when the cloud was kind of a wild idea with, with a whole bunch of doubters. And it's been an interesting time, but I feel the next 14 years are going to be exciting in a different way. Uh, we now have a very large customer base from almost every industry in the world built on RHEL, on running on AWS. And our goal now is to continue to add additional elements to our <coughs> offerings to build upon that and extend it. Um, the largest addition, which we were going to be talking a lot about here at the reInvent show was the partnership in April this year, when we launched the Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS as a managed version of OpenShift for container based workloads. And we're seeing a lot of the customers that have standardized on RHEL on EC2 are, or ones that are using OpenShift on premise deployments as the early adopters of Rosa. But we're also seeing a, a huge number of new uh, customers who never uh, purchased anything from Red Hat. So in addition to the, the customers, we're getting great feedback from systems integrators and ISV partners who are looking to have a software application run both on premise and in AWS. And with OpenShift being one of the pioneers in enabling both container and harnessing Kubernetes, well, Rosa is just a, a really exciting area for us to track and continue to advance together with AWS. It's very interesting. Um, before I get to Rose, I want to just real get the update on Red Hat and IBM, obviously the acquisition yeah. part of IBM. How is that impacting the partnership? Can you just quickly touch on that? Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll start off. And I mean, Red Hat went from a company that was about 15,000 employees competing with a lot of really large technology companies. And we added more than 100,000 field oriented people when IBM acquired Red Hat to help magnify the Red Hat solutions. And the global scale and coverage of IBM is incredible. I like to give two simple examples to people. One is, I remember our, our sales force in EMEA telling me they got a $4 million order from a country in Africa they didn't even know existed. And IBM had a hundred people in it. Or AT&T is one of Red Hat's largest accounts. And I think at one point we had seven full-time people on it. And AT&T is one of IBM's largest accounts and they had two seven story buildings full of people working with AT&T. So relative to AWS, we now also see IBM embracing AWS more with both software and services and the magnification of Red Hat based solutions combined with that embrace should be create some great growth. And I, I think IBM's pretty excited about being able to sell Red Hat software. So yeah, yeah. And go ahead. Manu, I think you have, yeah. Yeah, I, I think there's also, <laughs> Uh, it is definitely a net positive, John. Yes. Um, you know, just the, the joint work that Red Hat and AWS have done for the last 14 years, working in the trenches, supporting our end customers, is now also providing a lot of tailwinds for the IBM software partnership. Um, we have done some incredible work over the last 12 months around three broad categories. 
The first one is around product, what we're doing around customer success, and then what we're doing around sales and marketing. So on the product side, we have listed about 15 products on marketplace over the course of the last uh, 12 to 15 months. And our goal is to launch all of the IBM cloud packs. These are containerized versions of IBM software on marketplace by the first half of next year. The other feedback that we are getting from our customers is that, hey, we love IBM software running on Amazon, but we like to have a cloud native SaaS version of the software. So there's a lot of work that's going on right now to make sure that many of these offerings are available in a cloud native manner. And you're not talking about DB2, Cognos, Maximo, Curidon on, on, on EC2. The second thing that we're doing is making sure that many of these large enterprise customers that are running IBM software are successful. So our technical teams are attached to the hip, working on the ground floor in making customers like Delta successful in running IBM software on them. I think the third piece around sales and marketing, just firing up our vibrant ecosystem on how do we modernize and migrate uh, uh, this IBM software on cloud packs on AWS. So there's a huge uh, push going on here. So net net, you know, the Red Hat partnership is providing a lot of tailwinds. Uh, to accelerate our partnership with IBM Software. You know, I always, I've been saying uh, all this year in Red Hat Summit as well as Ansible Fest that distributed computing is coming to large scale and that's really the, what's happening. I mean, you're looking at what you guys are doing again, it's amazing. Uh, Rosa, Red Hat, uh, OpenShift on AWS, uh, very notable use to use the term on AWS, which actually means something in the partnership as we learned over the years. Um, how's that going, Mike? Because you launched on theCUBE in April, Rosa, it, had great traction going in. It's in the marketplace. You got some integration. It's really a hand in glove situation with cloud scale. Take us through what's the, what's the update. Yeah, let me let me let let me let Manu speak first to his AWS view, and then I'll add the the Red Hat picture. Thanks, thanks, Mike. John, for, uh, Rosa is part of our entire container portfolio. So if you look at it, so we have ECS. EKS, the managed Kubernetes service. We have the serverless containers with Fargate. We launched ECS, EKS anywhere. And then Rosa is part of our entire code, uh, portfolio of container services. As you know, two thirds of all container workloads run on AWS. And a big function of that is because we work back from our customers and then serve them what the requirements are. There are two sets of key customers that are driving the demand and the early adoption of Rosa. The first set of customers that have standardized on OpenShift on-premises, they love the fact that everything that comes out of the box and they would love to use it on Amazon. So that's the first point. The second set of customers are, you know, the large rel users on EC2, the tens of thousands of customers that we talked about that want to move from VM to containers and want to do DevOps. So it's this set of two customers that are informing our roadmap as well as our investments around Rosa. We are seeing solid adoption both in terms of adoption by a customer, as well as the partners and helping, and how our partners are helping our customers in modernizing from VMs to containers. So it's a, it's a, huge, uh, it's a huge priority for our container service. And over the next few years, we continue to see to increase our investment uh, uh, on, 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 the, on the product roadmap here. Yeah, from thank, from my perspective, first off at the high level in my mind, one of the most interesting parts of Rosa is being integrated in the AWS console and not just for the, you know, where it shows up on the screen, but also all the work behind what that took to get there and why we did it. And we did it because customers were asking both of us, were saying, look, OpenShift is a platform. We're going to be building and deploying serious applications at incredible scale on it. And it's really got to have joint high quality support, joint high quality engineering. It's got to be rock solid. And so we came to agreement with AWS that was the best way to do that was to build it in the console, you know, integrate it in into the core of an AWS engineering team with Red Hat engineers arm in arm. So that's, that's a very unique service. And it's not like a high level SaaS application that runs above everything. It's down in the bowels and, and really is, it needs to be rock solid. So we're seeing, you know, we're seeing great interest both from end users, as I mentioned, existing customers, new customers, the partner base, you know, all the, the systems integrators are coming on board. There's lots of business and money to be made in modernizing applications as well as building new cloud native applications. Uh, people can, you know, they're between Red Hat and AWS, we've got some 
some models around supporting uh, POCs and customer migrations. We've got some joint investments. It's a, it's a really ripe area. Yeah, that's it's good stuff. Real quick, uh, what's the what, what do you think of ROSA versus EKS and ECS? What's how should people think about that, Mike? Yeah. Yeah. Go, yeah. go for it, man. You, 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 yeah. Your job is to, to position all these, all these offerings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take us through. Yeah. Go ahead, Manu. Uh, uh, John, uh, John Rosa is part of our container portfolio services, along with EKS, ECS, Fargate, and the Anywhere services that we just launched earlier this year. Uh, there are you know set of customers both that are running OpenShift on premises that are standardized on Rosa, and then the large set of REL customers that are running REL on EC2. That want uh, that want to use uh, the Rosa service. So um, you know uh, both AWS and Red Hat are now continuing to invest in uh, accelerating the roadmap of the service on our platform. Uh, you know we are working on improving uh, the console experience. Also, one of the things we just launched recently is this Amazon controller for Kubernetes or you know service operators uh, for S3. So over the next few years, you'll see. You know, significant investment from both Red Hat and AWS in this joint service, and this is an integral part of our overall container portfolio. Yeah, and great stuff to get in the console. That's great, great integration. That's the future. Mm -hmm. I got to ask about the Graviton instance. This has been one of the most uh, biggest success stories I think we believe in Amazon history. Uh, in the acquisition of Annapurna, has really created great differentiation. And anyone who's in the software knows if you have good chips powering apps, they go faster. And if the chips are good, they're less expensive and that's the innovation. We saw that RHEL now supports Graviton instances. Tell us more about the Red Hat strategy with Graviton and ARM specifically. Has that impact your development and what does it mean for customers? Sure. Yeah, it's pretty. It's a pretty fascinating area for me. I, as I said, I've been at Red Hat 21 years and my job is to actually look at new markets and new technologies now for Red Hat and work with our largest partners. So I've been tracking the ARM dynamics for a while um, and we've been working with AWS for over two years supporting Graviton. And uh, it's I, I'm seeing more enthusiasm now in terms of developers and especially, especially for very horizontal, um, large scale applications. And we're excited to be working with AWS directly on it. And uh, I think it's going to be a fascinating next two years on ARM personally. I know specialized processors for training and instances, all this stuff can be applied to web services and, and, and automation like cloud native services, right? Is that, it sounds like yeah. a good direction. Take us through that. Yeah. Uh, John, uh, on our partnership with uh, Red Hat, we are continuing to iterate as Mike mentioned, the stuff that we've done around Graviton, both the last two years is pretty incredible. And the pace at which we are innovating is, is, is improving. Uh, around the Trinium and the uh, Inferentia instances, we are continuing to work with Red Hat and you know the support for REL should come shortly, uh, very soon. Well, that. my prediction is that the Graviton success form is going to be applied to every single category. You can get that kind of innovation with this on the software side, just really kind of just, that's the magical, that's the, that's the proven formula of software, right? We've been there. Good software powering with some great performance. Uh, Manu, Mike, thank you for coming on and sharing the, uh, the news and the partnership update. Uh, congratulations on the partnership, uh, really good, thank you. Thanks a lot, John, incredible time Great. here for us. Good. Thank you. Yeah, this is the future software as we see. Good to be on. It's all coming together here on theCUBE, we're bringing all the action, it's software being powered by chips. This is theCUBE coverage of AWS reInvent 2021. I'm John Furrier, your host, thanks for watching.